Hello and a very warm welcome to all the people attending this webinar today, organized by Praxis Business School in association with Analytics India magazine. While there is a huge demand for data scientists in India and in the world, getting into data science career is becoming a struggle. We will be in conversation with Bharat Kumar Bulla, an expert practitioner who has built an exciting career in data science in a very short span, uh, has been recognized as a 40 under 40 data scientist recently. We also have Professor Charanpreet Singh. He's the founder of the number one data science program in the country, someone who has seen close to 30 batches of data science students getting placed on Praxis campus. And in today's webinar, they will introduce us to the data science and analytics market, the emergence of data science as a field, the core skills to build a career in data science, and different job roles in data science and analytics industry. Hi, Professor, and hi, Bharat. Before we start the session, I would quickly likely like to inform you that Professor Charanpreet and Mr. Bharat will be taking up some questions during and at the end of the session. So start dropping your career questions on the Q&A tab. Now, without any further delay, welcoming our esteemed guests for the day. Hi again, Professor. Hi, Bharat. Welcome to the session. Yeah, no, yeah, hi. Hi. So starting this session and, and this discussion, I will start my question to Bharat first. You have built a wonderful career in data science in a span of a very uh, few years. How do you describe data science in your own words? And where do you see it headed in terms of growth and demand? Um, first of all, welcome to good morning, everyone. Welcome, everyone, for this wonderful session. Um, thanks, Ajiti, for the nice introduction. Uh, I see data science as a field where you extract value from raw data, right? And in turn, when you extract value from the data, this will help the business managers and the stakeholders to take right kind of decision that will result in some kind of metric, right? metric like it can be anything like customer satisfaction, revenue growth or plugging leakage, or it can be anything. So basically data science practitioners, uh, they, they, what they do is they extract the value from the data and they help the business stakeholders to make a, come at a better decision point. So that is, that is as simple as anything, okay? So for example, uh, in my case, currently I'm working at Salesforce, right? so here, what we are trying to do is uh, Salesforce is a platform uh, where it has several cloud products, but on the Salesforce platform, anyone can build an application. Just like you have an iPhone, anyone can build on an iPhone uh, application and it can they can load it on App Store. So on the pla Salesforce platform, anyone can build an application, and that can be helpful to anyone who is using Salesforce product. So here, what we are trying to do is just like if you go to any Amazon or any app store, uh, if you click on a uh, app or a product, you get recommendations. So what we are trying to here is we are trying to give better recommendations to the not only to the end user who is a, a, a customer, who is nothing but the people who are using Salesforce product in a company, and also to the business stakeholders uh, in from the Salesforce as well. So it is. It's twofold, both the Salesforce stakeholders and also the end customers, who can uh, uh, who can get this better recommendation so that they can help uh, they can help the, uh, these recommendations in their products, right? So they can load, they can up, uh, they can launch a new application, they can install this application so that their workflow management can get better and better. So this is just one of the example uh, I'm giving from my experience. So the examples are many and they are diverse and they are numerous. So, so this is briefly about what is data science uh, as a career. And coming to the second part of your question, right? Where do you see data science as a career? Um, data science in India, I would say maybe have started a decade ago, where people have started have coined it as analytics, and later it, now we are calling it as data science, and one and some people even call the advanced data science as artificial intelligence, right? Some parts of it, right? So. So it has matured definitely, right? So there is a lot of maturity in the field, right? Since uh, if a decade has gone through, there's a lot of maturity in the field, but there is also a, a humongous potential 
where these applications or the, the roles or the uh, or the utility of data science as a field has not touched each and every sector. Some sectors have taken advantage, like the digital companies, like let's say which are in the software as a service, digital companies, some marketing, retail, like Flipkart and all these companies. But it still is yet to touch a lot of other fields, right? There is some kind of things happening in banking, but they're still uh, not that much. But coming to manufacturing is a lagging sector, right? So there are many other sectors and many applications need to be discovered. So the growth is definitely uh, exponential and humongous. And there's a lot of potential for, uh, for anyone who is entering in this career. Very rightly said, Bharat, and I totally agree with you. There's a lot of potential that is uh, currently there in this industry and this domain. This brings me to uh, my next question to Professor. Firstly, I would like to congratulate you for, you know, uh, Praxis becoming and ranking number one in the uh, latest data science program survey by Analytics India magazine. So you as a pioneer in the data science education, how have you seen this entire industry evolving over the years? What has been particularly Praxis journey during this period, if you can explain? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ajiti. Uh, good to meet you, Bharat. I mean, we, we, we've spent a good time together at, at, at Praxis. And yeah, and uh, welcome to all the audience. Yeah, so it's great to be, uh, you know, ranked number one in a field which has a lot of uh, very other, a lot of other good brands as well. Uh, so I, I would say, I would agree with Bharat that, you know, there is a, there is a discrepancy in sector adaption and, and all of that. But if I look at the field, we started the program, a program in business analytics in 2011, which is kind of a decade before, before now, 11 years. And uh, if you look at that program and the program that we offer now, uh, it, it's a completely different animal, right? So uh, there has been an evolution in data science in many ways. One is uh, more and more sectors are adapting it and more and more sectors are looking at data as their core asset, right? So that is one change. So I think the world recognizes it. So if a sector is not adapting, there's a lot of work going on to, to, to somehow use data better. Right, so that is one. The second is uh, the scientific and technological, you know, uh, progress that has been made to enable us to capture data, to work with data, to produce results. So a huge amount of evolution has happened in that. I mean, it's almost difficult to keep pace with that, right, as an educational institution. Right. And a third thing is, you know, when we started this program, and then when you know Bharat joined, which is like I think four or five years back now. Uh, you know, uh, data science was considered uh, to be a domain for specific kind of people, uh, right? That is also opening up now. There's a democratization. So right now, both educational institutions, both and recruiters, as well as people, they are far more, you know, kind of adventurous about getting into data science. So you have people with non-tech backgrounds, uh, you know, finding data science very interesting and trying to get in. So I think both from a demand perspective and from a technology evolution perspective and from, you know, who can be a data scientist or who can be part of this domain. I think there has been a, uh, I would call all of it, you know, together as a democratization of uh, data science. It's no longer a, a nerdy kind of a field. It's now opening up. So that that's one thing we've seen. And Praxis has been kind of, uh, has seen that, uh, changed in India, at least. Uh, we started in 2011. Our course was full of statistics and, you know, data warehousing and all that. And now we we teach machine learning, deep learning, AI, and you know things like that. So the course is completely different. Uh, the uh, the the composition of our batch is completely different. We used to have 90% engineers at, or 95% engineers at one time. Now it is, you know, there are people from stats, eco math background. There are people from non uh, you know, uh, commerce background also coming in with, 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 with you know, with, with, with some kind of a, uh, let's say, ability with numbers and all that. So, and, and and I think the key to all of us is to keep evolving with the evolving science and making sure that uh, both from a curriculum perspective and from a delivery perspective, we keep with the times. So, I, and I think it's the tip of the iceberg. I think the, the potential for this science is just enormous. 
True, very true, uh, Professor. Uh, well, I can see one really very relevant question uh, at the current point at what discussion point that we are. Kopal is asking, sir, can you help me in choosing a career in between AIML and data science? I'm sure he can. I'm sure he needs a little bit more information about what you're doing, what your interest is, but Professor, take it over. What do you suggest? Okay, so uh, I think that AI and ML are techniques, and in fact, ML is uh, you know basically a subset of AI. So AI is a technique that is used in data science. So you can't really have a career in data science without uh, having a career in AI and ML, and the other way around. So uh, I mean, you know, there I mean, you will see a lot of nomenclature going around, but basically, as Bharat said, it's basically about having the ability to extract value from data. And these are some of the techniques that you use to. Uh, I, I think Bharat can add, any, you know, to that. Um, yeah, I would completely agree with you, Chance uh, Mister. So AIML is actually a subset of data science, right? So where when you call AI as artificial intelligence and machine learning, these are the subjects that are taught as part of our data science curriculum itself, Correct. right? So these these are comes under the huge umbrella called data science. It's not just data science is one core thing, right? It encompasses um, a bit of data, several skills, right? So one needs to have a bit of the several skills. And then later you can specialize in AI. Someone can specialize in only machine learning modeling. Someone can only specialize in AI based uh, technologies, right? Or someone can be a data science consultant, right? So, so everything comes under this huge umbrella called data science. Okay. So if you start with data science, then you can take your sub specialization later. Definitely, Who, whatever the that comes, whatever the interest you are, you feel is good for you. Okay. Correct, uh, Kopal. I hope that answers a little bit of your question. Plus, please let us know more so that we can help you. Going back to uh, our uh, interview. Um, Bharat, what made you give up your job and seek a career in data science? If you want to take a step back and understand that point, and uh, also what has been your mantra for your immense success of the, the current era? Sure. Um, somewhere around in uh, 2012 or something, I start. Uh, I heard this term analytics, right? Um, and actually, I heard it was more of a statistics-related field at that time. There was a big article in New York Times at that time. Uh, I was working as a life scientist in US, uh, where basically I'm designing experiments, doing uh, lab work, bench work, and when I get the results, I start analyzing them and trying to make a uh, um, essence out of out, out of the data. Right. So then I wanted to move core from like we do have a lot of data from genomics uh, and a lot of these experiments, but I really want to take, take wanted to take up data as a career where I can, I can make an impact in any subfield, for example, in marketing or banking or anything. So I started getting interested into that, um, uh, and unfortunately I had to come back to India. Then I thought maybe I need a specialized uh, education or a formal way of education where uh, I wanted to take a break from my regular work and get that kind of skills, right, where I decided to invest my time, right? So this is in uh, four years ago. So then I decided that what's the best school. I thought of joining an MSc statistics program, a two-year program, uh, somewhere in some of the top universities in India. But then I found about uh, data science as a career, uh, data science as a core or career. And, and then I found out Praxis with the school where it's a one-year program and I heard about the, the rankings and the reputation even at that time. Uh, and then I saw the curriculum syllabus and one of the main uh, uh, one of the main uh, catchy thing is the placements, right? You don't want to be like just uh, complete a course and you don't want to uh, wait for that kind of opportunity because I just want to jump into that because I know I have that background. Uh, yeah, I had that some kind of programming experience. I know the experimental design, some uh, basic good work in statistics. But on top of that, I want to get these skills in a very formal way. I'm ready to invest my time and found that the best way to use to take. Um, a program in, um, in in class program right full time in class program so that's why i chose practice at that time and since then that gave me a very good foundation and my own way of thinking right i never regret my one year i always feel that that has uh, taught me a lot where i can stand on my own legs and uh, where 
from there on, I built my career, right? So I will say that right after I graduated from my uh, from Praxis, where I was one of the highest uh, from the campus placement, I was the highest uh, got the highest placement. Uh, from there, in the span of three years, I was able to uh, get uh, increase my uh, salary. I mean, what you call the take home compensation or whatever it is by four times. In addition to that, I I, I got acquired the skills by continuous hard work, right? So it's a continuous hard work and uh, uh, investing a lot of time. Uh, and then I was able, also able to publish some 10 research papers as well. So I definitely say the time I spent at Praxis gave me a lot of good foundation. And it made me, uh, it ma it made me realize that there's a lot of potential in the field. And definitely I keep on putting the good work uh, and that gave me very good uh, returns. And more than returns, the satisfaction is, is is the one I always look for. Correct, Bharat. So you spoke a bit about your background. We will come to that a bit uh, in my next question in details. But uh, what you mentioned and based on what you just said, so you were dealing with data before actually getting into data science. A bit. Yes, you were sort of playing yes. with it. Correct. Because I was doing a life science, I'm a life scientist, so we get experimental data. I was dealing with data, understanding and getting a sense out of data. You sort of a little relevant question that I have. Uh, she, she, I guess, uh, writes, uh, her question is, uh, as we notice, usually all companies need experienced person for the job. Then how should a guy with zero experience can try to move in in this domain? If you can just highlight a bit of tips and tricks for Priyanshu. Um, you're asking me or CP sir? Like, uh, tell me. Uh, I think CP sir could take this up definitely. And Bharat, okay. we would also like to understand a bit from you as well. Um, companies, uh, it's, it's a both a chicken and problem, a, a problem, right? So companies always want experienced people, and we always we can only get experience once we get an offer, opportunity, right? It's, the problem is always there. It's not a problem you're having for the first time. But there's always companies, right, just like they're recruiting uh, freshers, they're also looking for freshers in data science as well, because uh, the, they may not offer the role as a data science, they can call as a business analyst, data analyst. If someone is starting their career as a data analyst or a business analyst, then they can climb the ladder and they be, can, can become a data scientist or senior data scientist, they can reach that level. So there are definitely those kinds of roles offered being offered by some of the companies may not be all but definitely that that roles are there i, I, I can watch for that professor yeah so yeah so this is again part of the evolution which is happening right so when we started i think uh 90 percent over 90 percent of our batch used to be uh you know people with experience but that experience could be in IT, it could be in uh, you, know, tech, you know manufacturing, sometimes sales, anything, right? Right, and and there were very few people who were joining us straight from college, but that has changed now over the years. So today, 20 to 20, almost sometimes 25 percent of our batch is of people who've finished their graduation. They want to you know continue their studies, you know, get the data science skills and start their career with data science. So as Bharat said, there are some recruiters who so we have all kinds of recruiters, right? So last year we had 92 recruiters <laughs> on campus over across the two courses. So some recruiters are not at all uh, bothered about how many years of experience you have or if you don't have an experience because they have their own way of testing you. They have an aptitude test and then an interview. Some recruiters say at least two years of experience and some recruiters are there who say maximum two years of experience. So, you know, it depends on which company, where they want these people, how they want to fit them. Right. So, uh, as I said, it's democratized. So Priyanshu, I mean, you know, uh, if you want to get into data science and that's how you want to start your career, uh, I think this is the great, great opportunity for you to do that because the demand right now, especially post COVID has just, uh, you know, just you know kind of accelerated yeah um, I, I want to add this as an example because examples matters a lot two of my batchmates who are straight away freshers in my batch i'm a, I'm a person with uh, seven years of experience okay, okay. in life sciences okay uh, i didn't work never work in software as a field. two of my batchmates who are straight away freshers uh, with whom i'm still in touch with right they stayed and they grow they have grown a lot 
that they got three levels of promotion in a you know, the span of last three years and they're straight out of their college right right and one of one of the other experienced person right in my and he's the topper of a batch now he's a vice president of a data science uh, in a data science for a, for a huge multinational company so this is the kind of growth uh, at least i can uh, i have seen in, in my batch mates. so so you you know right right uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. UI, yeah 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 Correct. So there you go, Priyanshu. I think uh, those examples should give you more motivation. And as uh, Professor said, this is the right time post COVID. The demand is going really crazy. And this is the right time to dive into this domain. Yep. On that note, uh, uh, Professor, you have seen or have a great idea about and overseeing the campus placements in uh, Praxis and for close to 30 batches. What, according to you, are the skills and aptitude critically recruiters are looking for in data scientists, whether it is whether, whether they are pressures or they are working professionals? Yeah, that is a little it's a tough question to answer because, you know, the recruiters form a very heterogeneous kind of a milieu, right? Uh, but uh, I'll break. I'll try to break this up into two because I think a lot of audience would be you know, interested in this. So I'll break it up into two parts. So what are your hard skills, right? Now that is a moving target, actually. You know, I mean, you know, the, when we started, it used to be SAS, then it became R, now it's Python, right? Uh, then it, it used to be all Tableau, now Power BI has become very important. So these are tools that you need to learn. <clears throat> then there was a time when data scientists were just considered to be mod model builders, right? Now. Recruiters have told us that they also need to understand a little bit about the engineering part of data. So data engineering, you know, we've introduced a little bit of that. And, and you know, so this is something where you need hard skills. You need hard skills in math and stats. You need hard skills with tech. Uh, and, and you need, uh, so, so, and this, some of this will keep changing. Math and stats will remain. You know, they are like uh, fundamental skills. And then there is, I see a lot of emphasis now on the softer aspects. You know, are you a curious person? You know, there are ways of finding that out in the interview. Uh, are you a problem solver? Right? Uh, are you a good storyteller? Can you describe your project? Okay, so when I'm, I'm describing my project, am I starting with the business problem or am I diving into technology? You know, so they want to see, you know, there are two things that all recruiters see because I have recruited all my life till I started Praxis, right? That one I want to see is can this person do the job today? The other thing I want to see is, is, will this person grow in my company? You know, in five years from now, can I can I see this person heading heading something, right? So, so I, so I think the recruiters look for a combination of hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills for the immediate job, and softer skills for growth. You know, ability to work in the team, and and then maybe lead teams and and do something you know great in the company. So. So that's how, and there are lots of ways they test people. There are written tests. There are sometimes they give you a presentation to make. Sometimes they give you small assignments and see how you approach them. Yeah. So that's 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 my and and and, and I think it's a, this is also matured. I think uh, previously it was mostly a technology uh, tech, tech and stats interview, but now I think it has gone much 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 bigger than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would also like to add from my perspective where I faced interviews for the last one year when I was switching a job. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the same thing. Some country, some companies go for hard software skills. They test you on a bit on a bit lesser than a regular software engineer like a, on data structure. But most companies give you a data set. They ask you to analyze, come up with your own uh, insights, right, uh, and present them to the audience, right, uh, and, uh, and also big soft fundamentals of uh, basic machine learning algorithms. It's just the fundamentals, right? Um, or if the company is hard, hardcore uh, company that is doing on something image or NLP, they can give you that kind of uh, data set, uh, right? They can say that can you even deploy this model, right? Yeah, I, I face this kind of things as well. So it's a huge spectrum, right? Yeah. Uh, they can um, simply they can still, uh, it can start from a simple giving a tabular data and can you give your insights? They will ask a couple of questions and how do you approach those questions is more important, right? To That's it can right. be anywhere on the other side of the spectrum can be any uh, advanced uh, 
uh, uh, advanced technology are using uh, deep learning on image or somehow. So it, it compasses a huge thing. Correct. Uh, thanks, Professor and Bharat. This actually makes the you know understanding of what uh, recruiters uh, actually look for uh, much clearer. So let's take one question from the audience. Uh, Sondar Rajan has, is asking uh, how to approach an employer if a person has a career gap and also wants to make a successful career transition in data science. Yeah, may I take that question? Yeah. Uh right so because i have i've been asked this question a lot so i i'll tell you what i mean if your career has been ha, has not been in data science and you are uh you know you want to transition to a career in data science i think you need to acquire the skills for that uh because you know the although there's a huge demand there is also a lot of lot of cvs that these employers get okay or potential employer they get a huge number of cvs so they have a choice so there's a huge demand there are a lot of people who want these jobs which still hard to get a job i think at least your first job now bharat is exceptional i mean he's worked really hard after he got his job that's how he's moved everybody doesn't move as well as he did uh but but yeah but uh you know so you need to give evidence to your potential employer that you have these skills so you can put them on the cv right and then you're going to be quizzed on them right and if your cv gets you know shortlisted first you have to get shortlisted everybody will put the same words on the cv right so you 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 need to get shortlisted so you mean you may need to show some courses you've done or some certifications that you've got maybe some projects that you've done so it's not a field where like sales where you can show up and say that you know i communicate well and you know why don't you talk to me and recruit me they're looking for serious uh, ability i think bharat you want to add yeah i wanted to i think that question uh, directly reflects my uh, career transition i had an year gap after i came back to india and then i joined praxis so every time i change my job i have to say that what is the gap i need to justify what is the gap for these two years i said that that one year is i traveled around india and you need to be one needs to be honest i traveled yeah. quite a bit at least south india and the second year i had a full time program right so that's my upskilling so that is nothing wrong in, at all because companies are even providing a lot of opportunities to upskill so if anyone has a career gap they need to be honest with the recruiter that can happen with anyone like with anyone right everyone's career is, is would not be a smooth linear line right it can be have ups and downs and we need to be honest with the recruiters once in an interview someone asks you the question why did you have this gap and once you say an honest answer they appreciate and they move on they don't take it as a black mark on that would not deter you or hamper you from moving ahead in the interview process right what expects is honesty someone can have some other financial trouble some family problem right it's all part of our life one needs to be open with that honest but uh, it's nothing wrong that would not and my um, at least mine is a, one of the examples that you can take from uh, and move on in your career correct absolutely right so uh, this also sort of uh, i can see a lot of questions uh, from the audience and i also have that uh, on my note and we get uh, this question being asked like many a times who can become a data scientist and what kind of background does one need so this question is for both and i would like to start with professor first we would like to understand from your perspective and then we'll go to bharat okay uh i think i this answer uh, i have had webinars earlier and now my answer is changing I, you know uh, there was a time when as a as an individual i used to insist on very strong math background and you know some knowledge of tech uh, to even get people into praxis because we used to and i, I think the world was like that at least the indian uh, you know landscape was like that recruiters were looking for that uh, today i would say that uh, you know it's more fundamental than that and if you're good with numbers and uh, you uh, I, I would say you're not uncomfortable with technology you're willing to learn uh, i think recruiters have become much more accommodating uh, which which has also kind of we've seen that happen so even our recruitment for our program has also become more accommodating so uh, I, I would say that if you're scared of math 
you dropped math in 11 and 12 because you didn't want to do math ever again, then data science is not a career for you, right? There's no point chasing it just because there are jobs, uh, you know, uh, because you don't want to do something that you, in, you know, intrinsically are not fond of doing, right? Okay. Uh, and and if, if you are technoplegic, which means that, you know, you're scared of technology, you, you, you know, you don't want to mess with tech, then again, it's going to be a problem because data science is now, there is a tech component, which is very, very important. But other than that, I mean, you know, if you are, uh, you know, if you like solving problems, if you uh, like solving puzzles, if you, uh, if you have, if you think you're a patient person who can see right to the end of a, a problem, you have that temperament, you love playing with numbers, you know, then background, I think, goes into the background. I mean, these are the skills that you, and the rest can be learned, I think. So that's, uh, I know it's a little, it, it's, it's, you know, a, a bold kind of statement to make. Uh, but I think I'm seeing more and more people realize later that, you know, they, they want to get into this. They're transitioning from very different careers, coming from very different, you know, college backgrounds and, and still making, uh, you know, I'm finding their way into this. So, Bharat, if you want to add to that. Yeah. yeah. So, I would not, I said this is a very one of the controversial topics that's been happening in a lot of online media platforms like LinkedIn uh, everywhere. Yeah. So, I would say that I would not say that anyone can become a data scientist because yeah. unless you are whole and soul thoroughly interested, and if you don't, if you have an inquisitive mind where you wanted to find the answers, right? Only, only if you have that, then you can try to become a data scientist and you can be a practitioner in this field. Right? Otherwise, as you said, sir, CP, sir, like you said. This is not for everyone, right? You so, have to love math. You have to do some kind of programming. In uh, in early days, a decade back, when SAS was the only statistical software, um, it was a bit easier. Now everyone is moving towards open source, such as Python. So you need to learn Python. So these are the so what, if someone knows Java, they can learn Python easily. But if you don't know even any programming language, like me, like where I learned SAS first and then our transition Python, now even PyTorch and TensorFlow. So if you are willing to learn, this is this career is for you. Right? And what kind of background does one need? Uh, strangely, like I would say one anecdote, um, if someone knows in the 1990s, people from Bachelor of Commerce came and uh, learned IBM mainframe and they built the career as a software professional. Can you imagine like BCom, they went and learned IBM mainframe, right? So I so I would not go to that extent, but if someone who is willing to learn, there is a career here for you. And the background, there is someone, there is a piece of cake for everyone. Like for example, if they are hardcore software engineers who want to become a data scientist, then there is fields such as machine learning engineer or um, uh, data engineering, uh, kind of hybrid kind of role. If someone has a good soft skills, understand the business well, or make other people uh, understand what the requirement is, then there is a field called data science consultant. If someone is from a product, uh, someone is coming from a, a tech background who knows the impact of a product, then there is a product manage a role such as intersection of product management and data science, like strategy, product management, and data science. There are roles such that. So you, so whatever your background is. If you find this interesting, you can make a transition. But definitely, there is a certain amount of uh, hard skills, as uh, CP said. Like you need to love math, and you need to understand tech. You need to be. You don't need to be tech savvy, but you should not be scared of uh, using tools and techniques. Right, and that willingness to learn will take you further. Absolutely. So you can't run away from math if you want to be in data science. That's, that's I mean, some. <laughs> Can't run away from math and stat, but you don't need to have a PhD level math and stat. Definitely, some definitely. kind of fun, fundamentals so that you can explain why this is happening, something like that, right? You should definitely should not be scared of it. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. So this brings me to my next uh, question, which is now that you have mentioned these critical skills and these prerequisites that we need to be in this domain. How do you think a data science aspirant or a young data science or an enthusiast watching this webinar right now can acquire these skills and can start their career? If you can highlight that. Uh, this is a wonderful question, Sajidi. Like from decade ago, where we where we were 
we, we, we wanted to learn the skills and data science skills, there is the problem of scarcity. Now, a decade later, this is a problem of plenty. So there are umpteen number of huge resources where you can find on YouTube, or you can go to a, a, a tech platform, Coursera, edX, or even free code camp, right? You can take up all the courses such as statistics or basics, Python, right? And the applications of data science in various uh, fields and all these courses, you can take it for free. You can learn on your own, right? So definitely you can do it on your own. The, so there is no uh, scarcity of resources. There's something number of resources and actually, I feel like I, we are uh, under the, the deluge of resources, right? It's a huge, uh, we, I, I, if I want to learn a specific skill, even I'm also scared that uh, what is the best one, right? Where should I start, right? So there's huge, um, uh, vast resources that are available. But the problem is there is no, very few people or very few institutions are starting that structured way of learning, right? So the, the problem is with the, uh, there is no structured way of learning, right? So we, we get lost in the resources. So that is one of the reason why I took a praxis, which gave me that foundations and the structured way of learning, where it uh, I learned from my peers who are coming from different backgrounds, who came from, uh, as I told, who came from a huge um, uh, hardcore software engineers uh, or computer science engineers and all, right? So that kind of a program, if someone is interested, they can uh, uh, enroll in and they can invest in time and it gives them a, structured pathway to learn right so coming to resources nowadays uh iams have started mba and business analytics a lot of uh, private top mba colleges are there as i told um coursera adex um even all these things have started their own thing on youtube everyone is starting their own youtube channel and trying to teach something right so th there is there are resources but definitely we get lost and we need a structured pathway Correct. Uh, so, Bharat, uh, just one question. I, I can see it in the audience, uh, this questions tab, and I also feel it's very relevant. Do you think more and more people are jumping in this data industry, and will there be a saturation point? It's a question by Alankar. Definitely. Right? There will be a saturation point for everything, right? So, that saturation point, we don't know. No one can predict. Currently, what I see is still a lot of potential, right? Um, the saturation point will be there. For any field, any tool, right? So once it's run is over, people uh, have a, I mean, industries have a different requirement, right? So that trend is there. Okay. So I hope but before yeah, the saturation will happen in the next one year or two years, at least. Uh, that's what I can say. I thought the saturation. See, if uh, I would say that, I asked the uh, person, who is that person? Uh, there is a there's a wonderful resource called Gartner Hype Cycle. They can go and see that Gartner hype cycle. It is always a upward trend. There is a downward trend, and there is a plateau. And again, there is an upward trend. This is what I have seen with my career in bioinformatics, right? So I wanted to bioinformatics understand genome. First, there is a huge thing. Then, they, uh, right, there are a lot of huge, uh, what you call the the media attention towards the bioinformatics. Then, it, then they realize that it's not that easy to crack. And it took a two decades from them to crack the bioinformatics and to design two RNA vaccines that are helping the world for COVID. The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are because of the breakthroughs, what we have two decades ago. So there is a huge interest. People uh, started, uh, university started offering bioinformatics courses, some drugs and molecules have been designed. But again, uh, that went down. There's also a hype cycle went down, but again, it started again. So there's always this sign, uh, upward trend, downward trend. So one need, need not deter by these trends. Market goes up, market goes down. But the SQL has been there for 30 years. It's still there. We use it. Yeah. So right. I, I, yeah. Please, please. I, I would like to add a little. See, I, I have a different analogy for data science because in my opinion, I think as we move forward, every professional will be a data professional and every company will be a data company. Right, because that's core. So I think I, my analogy with data is like communication. I mean, can we say that will good communication ever be? Will will there be a saturation point where you know people with good communication will not be required? It, it is as fundamental as that now. So people with skills of understanding data, of getting value out of data, because the amount of data we're going to generate is going to go 
up and up and up now we have iot already there now we're going to have 5g okay so what we i i am actually scared of how much data we'll have yeah okay I, 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 <laughs> so I mean, right. new and new fields are coming and they're throwing up new challenges and opportunities right the data coming from iot is one example once the, a lot of these devices are connected where 5g is coming right you will find new use cases and new data and new challenges yeah so the, the fields might saturate in some uh, areas but new fields will open up that's why that field that that trend will be there right the saturation will happen in some uh, domains but some domains will keep it going yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah so i i i mean for me it would be a surprise if the demand for data people who can work with data will go down i mean because it's it's as i said as a tip of the iceberg i mean so people are jumping in it's good i we want more people to jump in you know uh, because recruiters so it, 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 it's a very interesting problem in india you know there are a lot of people who don't get employment and there are a lot of employers who don't get people to employ so the so, so actually the gap is in the skills the, the skills that employers want are not the skills that people have so you know if you want to kind of sort of you know uh, i mean uh, solve this this balance you know you you so, so we we always say that you know keep reskilling to be you know to be relevant yeah correct and like you said data is definitely not dying more and more data is generated and it's beyond your imagination how yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it can, it can revolutionize the world it can change the world and people who can read data would always be in demand so absolutely yeah, yeah. before any saturation or any sort of dip comes this is the right time as professor said in that case let's understand or take up a few more questions from the audience and understand a bit of what they want to uh, you know get to know from us what quality do you need to become a da good data scientist shubhadeep is asking so chanpreet uh, professor chanpreet if you yeah. want to take it then probably I, I think we i think we did discuss it when I, I said that you know there are certain hard skills that you need uh, right. which you can, which you can learn right and and you must learn so i think i go back to what bharat was saying that you know if you are serious about this career and actually you don't have a career in data science unless you are serious about it because it's complex right uh, it's not a it's not a frivolous choice uh, and there are some people who do come in with that uh, you know mindset once they get into a program like ours they themselves change very quickly they realize it's very different from what they thought other college education was in their you know in their uh, uh, you know graduation so so if you are serious about it then you have to get trained in those hard skills right and and uh, uh, that's how your your foundation is built and then you become a continual learner because this field will keep evolving but unless you have that 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 pillar of you know on which you can build you will not even be able to learn with the job so that is one and the second is i think that you know the natural part of you you know are you a curious person if you see a problem do you want to solve it or if you see a problem you say there's enough people in the world let somebody else solve it you know let me continue with my 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 you know life so these are yeah so, so you see a sudoku puzzle let's say you're waiting for a flight and you you're there's a newspaper and there's a sudoku puzzle there are two types of people there are people who look at it and say good the other person would just pick it up and say that i need to solve it now so if you have that temperament i think you just walk into this domain you'll do well right and then communication so because you know bharat talked about a data science consultant eventually all data scientists become consultants because either internally or externally they are advising they are telling people what to do what this is what's happening to your business this is what you need to do or even understanding the business from the domain experts before they start working on a problem so your communication skills your ability to work with others you know so there was a quote by a very senior person in the in the silicon valley data science industry who said that a data scientist is an animal which has never been found because that person has to have so many qualities so if you have a few of them i i think you are good yeah you can survive in the industry then <laughs> yeah yeah you I, I mean why survive you can you, you can build uh, you know build very good careers in this industry yeah. I mean, you can survive with basic skills but if you have to try it you yeah. definitely have to have that continuous learning which i would find uh, even though i'm in a in a comfortable stage i'm still putting 
uh, 10 to 20, 15 hours of uh, a week for continuous learning of various things. So, and, and, and I feel good about it. I, and I don't feel bad about it uh, because that's a satisfaction. Yeah. Very right, very right, uh, Bharat. I have a very interesting question from Jatin. Uh, how can I implement my strong mathematical knowledge in machine learning? I'm working as an advanced math expert, apart from my regular job as an automation engineer. Which domain of AI ML uh, utilizes the mathematical knowledge? I feel all, but please. Um, I, it's, a, it's, a fair, um, it's a very good question. Some of the skills, hardcore skills, that uh, one needs to have very cutting edge skills is optimization problem, right? Where uh, you wanted to solve a lot of variables and you want to optimize for a particular um, end result, right? So optimization is one area where with advanced deep learning technologies, where you can take advantage of this non uh, stochastic optimization and all these things. There is Now there is a thriving field, uh, there's a very upcoming field where you can apply these deep learning technologies on optimization. Right, that can solve very complicated, uh, very complicated and compute intensive uh, problems. Right, so that is where I think he can definitely use his skills and uh, um, get into uh, use his skills in, in data science. Um, and um, that is one area I, I definitely I can see something for him. Yeah, actually, I think that you know there is even in data science, you know, we follow up. A path right there is this descriptive analytics then there is you know uh, in, inferential analytics then there is predictive analytics which is what models do and then what Bharat was talking about is prescriptive analytics so now I know I can predict to with some degree of confidence that this is what is likely to happen in future so let's say I'm a you know retail giant and I have this huge number of stock keeping units you know hundreds and thousands of stock keeping units now and i know what is going to happen i have a fair idea because of data science that this is what is likely to happen right now knowing is not enough i need somebody with deep mathematical skills to now tell me how do i manage my inventory for maximum uh, you know revenue and profit so i have a, a, a huge complexity of problem there's pricing involved there is, uh, you know, merchandising involved. What do I keep in my store at what time, what point in time? Because so one is I know what's going to happen. And the other is how do I make the best decision knowing what is going to happen? So when we study for exams, I know I have this problem. I don't know this part of math. Or, and I know these kind of questions are going to come. But how do how do I know, you know, prepare myself for that? So that's where optimization becomes very big and that's where and the other part i think where mathematical skills may be required and bharat can add to that because i think he's he's a practitioner you know there is a big side of ai which is about ethics you know is ai ethical or not is, is are the models fair or not is there a bias in the models or not where are you getting the data from because eventually models are built on mathematical principles so we need people to get into the math of these models to you know un unlock the black box uh, to tell us what's really happening and then yeah, again as you do yeah, you'll need that's skills a great, that's a great insight sir like unlocking these black box path models and making them open and making them reveal their inside things is one of the thriving field happening with a lot of uh, research areas in various universities as you yes. said right yes. scale the problem at scale as you said let's say i have thousand stores and i have ten thousand products and i wanted to predict uh, what is the demand for these 10,000 products at 1,000 stores, right? It becomes very complicated. So I have to have a time series forecasting for each of these uh, yes. companies, which is very tough to manage and maintain. So now, how is Amazon able to do? How is now Flipkart is trying to do? How every other Nike is trying to do, right? We don't want to have, because we are entering an era of personalization. When you're targeting personalization, you have a very different skew, right? It's a particular uh, model, particular color, particular flavor. And you can't keep everything in stock. That's where the problem of forecasting at scale optimization comes into the picture. Yeah. Correct. I have another very specific uh, career question. Uh, this is by Ritesh. Uh, he's saying he has a decade plus experience in sales. Uh, he used to own electronic wholesale business. What value, if any, uh, one can bring to the batch 
and what steps I can take to make my profile attractive for recruiters. I'm, I'm not really sure if. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah. I can understand the question. I mean, you know, we have. So yeah. So let me give you an example from from our own program. So we have people who are running their own businesses, uh, and and uh, maybe either the business wasn't going anywhere or they said that there are enough people in the family doing it and I want to now branch out and I want to get it to and and uh, smart guys right I mean it's not that you know they were and and so uh, we were a little hesitant and, and, and we also evolved later we grew more in confidence and we had more and more recruiters for our campus and we said that okay fine you know so we've, we've seen that uh, people with 10 years 12 years experience also transitioning their careers uh, the challenge here is, I'll tell you, to make your, you know, what what will be attractive is you have 10 years of sales experience. Any experience in any domain of, of that duration is attractive to any to recruiters, right? The challenge is where did they fit you? Because you are senior in terms of age and experience, but as a data science, you're a fresher. Okay, so that becomes kind of a fitment problem within the organization. But people today are taking those risks and recruiters are also taking those risks one is the sheer need for more people i mean the other is that there are you know this whole thing is becoming very interesting if you look at the metrics what kind of people you need in a data science team you may need a sales expert in a data science field and if he, that person doesn't know anything about data science it becomes difficult to talk to him to 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 explain to him the language so you can use that expertise and 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 get a get get a pretty good assignment in that area right so uh, but again you got to be good with numbers i mean don't chase data science because there's a glamour attached to it uh, you know you 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 should be interested and passionate i think bola bharat made that point also so that is very important and of course willing to learn invest time take time off get into a program learn everything maybe halfway through the program you may realize this is not for me which is also fine i mean you know but probably you'll not it's fascinating actually to get into this uh, and I'm, I'm sure this applies to all the people. I can see many questions which have like uh, based coming from senior mid management from a different domain or a sales or any other domain. So they all want to, you know, uh, change their career. But uh, like like professor said that you have to take up the projects which are sort of uh, bridges that gap. Right, professor? So, yeah. 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 So I would just add and just to make it simple, two things. One is you you are getting into data science because you've studied it or you studied about it and you're fa you're fascinated and passionate and and somewhere inside you know that i can do this you know i know i like numbers and all of that that is one part and the second is you you have the time to invest in learning you know so there are two th i think if these two things are there you know there's a fair chance true so let's let's talk about praxis a bit i've, I've been trying to uh, ask this question for some time there have been many online and hybrid courses available in the country professor while praxis has been running a full-time in-class program how are these yes. two different and how one can make as an aspirant how one can make a choice okay so yeah i'll uh, yeah, so this is a question that we get asked all the time, you know, why shouldn't I do an online course? And I, I have absolutely, in fact, we like online courses. A lot of people started with online and then came to us. Uh, I think that uh, two, two or three things, you know, one is where are you in your journey? You know, if you have a tech background, you are, you know, good with data, you worked with data. And, and uh, then maybe a little bit of top up from some of these uh, resources maybe can work, you know, that is number one number two are you time poor that means you don't have time or you are you you know maybe financially you don't you're not in a position to leave your job your family or issues and you know, or finance itself right so if you have those kind of constraints or you are already at a level where you know you don't really need to learn the basics you already know them i think online courses are great yeah uh if you are serious about the career about a career and and it's kind of you you are good with your fundamentals but you don't really have, you haven't haven't studied any of these things then i think a full time program gives you a lot of uh, advantages one is it's structured i think the point that bharat made you know so we are 
taking away your stress on what should I learn, how much should I learn. You know, we are we are giving you you know a a a, a, a well made product to to to, and it is a time tested product, right? So and every year, every quarter, we make changes to keep pace. So one is it is structured. The second is you have a cat, you know, in class program. You have peers, some of whom them are much smarter than you in tech tech, but much weaker than you in math. So you learn from each other. Okay, you do projects together, physically. And then you have faculty uh, who are who understand this and with whom you can have a chat at any time. You have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and you discuss things. Then you have a campus placement program, which is like uh, so the most difficult thing to get a job is your first job. So you know, if you have a program which has a campus placement attached to it, we have a day zero where I mean, you know, maybe fifty to sixty percent of the batch gets placed in five months. Now, if you know that, and and you know from your alumni network and all of that, what kind of questions are going to be asked, and all of so so then there is mock interview. So what 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 is that? It 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 kind of gives you a stress free, uh, but hard work driven, uh, you know, entry into the data science uh, domain, and it is an end to end solution. You know, uh, if you are selected, it means we feel you are good enough, and then it's right up to the time you get your first job and beyond. Uh, that that alumni network is very strong, so we have a Praxis Jobs uh, thing uh, Facebook page where people like Bharat also, you know, they they is working with Salesforce. If they if he needs people, first thing he'll do is he'll put that up on Praxis Jobs. So other alumni and he would put that you know three to five years experience, two years experience, and then that that dialogue. So so even uh, you know, and we have more, uh, close to a thousand alumni now across the globe actually. So all of that, and you will get that from other such programs also. I mean, you know, you. Uh, I mean, I'm not just saying it's praxis, but I think a full-time program, given the complexity of this whole subject, I think makes sense. So I just want to add a point from my perspective uh, with respect to praxis, right? Uh, uh, one, two, two USPs. I, I, the, the two US uh, unique selling points for which attracted me to praxis is one is definitely a structured learning program which I'm always in uh, favor of. And the second thing is um, the placements, the campus placements record. And the third thing which I came to know after joining the program is the way they update their syllabus, right? The, the, the teaching material, the update, the syllabus, subjects, how they add it. It has evolved over a decade, which is, uh, right, which doesn't happen with sometimes uh, other programs or other in-class or other even sometimes online programs, right? So the way they updated the syllabus is itself is a um, is a that is what attracted me after I came and understood the program because I dig into the program I under, I got their syllabus what they taught ten years ago and now I know how much effort they have put in updating along with the continuous feedback from the industry from the recruiters right they have that's a that's another uh, crucial thing that I came to offer as a company in the program. Uh, and I'm completely aligned and agreed uh, agree to this uh, thought process. Uh, the, the benefits that you get in an in-class, uh, in-person program, you do not get that in online. And the placement, the accessories, the, the opportunities it brings in. So if somebody wants to build in a career, a full-time career in data science and very serious about it, I think they should definitely uh, go for in-place in uh, why not praxis for that matter you know um, yeah i mean yeah of course yeah we'll be delighted but could we i mean but but in class and again i'll just give you one in covid we had to transition online right everything was transitioned to online but it was still live and we had the same schedule so we had classes from from the morning till the afternoon and you know the same processes we could not go to class I think the students did not get as great an experience as they would have if they were in class. But given the circumstances, you know, they they did pretty they did as well though, because the companies were also very kind when they came for interviews, online interviews. They said we are calibrating for the fact that these people were not in class and and all of that. Everybody was very empathetic. You know, that period was like that, right? But of yeah. course, very unavoidable. And of course, it, it's uh, something we have sort of evolved because of the situation yeah yeah so yeah so I'm, I'm we are sort of nearing the end but i want to take up some cr very critical questions from the audience which will i feel would help the rest of the people who are watching us um do you think in terms of career transition 
age could be a hindrance? Aditya is asking. Please. I mean, we have students who are fresh right up to, we've had students with 22 years of experience also. Okay. And I think Bharat had seven years, if I remember. I mean, you know, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'll give you a small I'm anecdote. 43 years yeah. old. He's writing. 43, yeah. He's okay. The BP yeah. industry. Okay. So that would be close to two decades of experience, basically, right? Yeah, that's a lot. That that is a lot. Yeah. So I I think that uh, uh, it's 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 not easy to say that you can transition your career, uh, but if you can afford to take a, a chance, uh, you know, at, at forty three, if if I if I were to learn something i would have learned data science i mean it's you know that way i'm saying so if you can afford to take a risk it's fine if you cannot afford to take a risk i think 43 is a is is a little dicey i don't know what uh, bharat what you would say i, I would completely agree with you. yeah yeah but i think if if the risk is taken the amount of experience aditya sort of brings in that would just work on his favor yeah, depends on what experience uh, he brings in, you know. So yeah, so that, so so I think what you can do is, you know, we can you can share my my and Bharat's details. I mean, they can talk to us, you know, and and we can we can answer that uh, because these are these will be very his case will be very specific and for him, you know. So we can surely talk. Yeah. Correct. Of course, and we will not be able to take all the questions because I can see a lot of questions coming in. So please, whatever questions we are not taking, please reach out to Professor and Bharat. They'll be happy to answer your questions, but uh, let's take a few more uh, before we wrap up the session. Uh, Rishabh is asking, uh, should one start their career from a startup or from an MNC? I mean, there's a whole world between a startup and an MNC, right? I mean, there are lots of Indian companies also, <laughs> right? I mean, who are neither startups nor MNCs. Uh, I think that uh, startups are exciting, okay, but not always safe. So we've had a couple of times when startups have said, recruited and then not taken the people, yeah, because something happened, the project didn't come, and all of that, right? So if, if uh, you know those, so it's completely unknown startup. We usually don't encourage that startup to come to campus unless you know we know the startup for a year or two and some things have happened, uh, because we we got we, we, this happened with us, you know. But uh, otherwise, uh, if you get into a good startup, you learn a lot because you have to do some everything yourself. So the learning curve is very steep. See, if I'm starting my career, I would go into startup because I can afford that risk. Maybe 15 years or two decades later, I would not take the risk. If it's not a well-established startup, it's not I mean, a mature startup, I would not take the risk. Correct. Correct. Uh, I have uh, another very interesting question. This is coming from Shahrukh. Uh, how does data science course can help can have a self-employed entrepreneur? Can they build a business around data science as it's a booming industry? Yeah, I mean, you know, it depends on the business you have. Uh, uh, or you can start in, if you there are some people who are good with business and they know how to run businesses, you can actually start. So what happens a couple of times I've seen because you ours is a, you know, we have people studying together. Sometimes two or three people get together and have an idea. Like, like you know, you have in IITs and all, you know, people start a company while they are still on campus. This is too short a program for that. But yeah, I mean, you know, for that, for that, you, you, I think it's good to know what data science is thoroughly, and then network with people who are working with it, and and then you know maybe something. And if you have a, if if you have an existing business where data is important. Suppose you are you are a, you know you are advising people on on in finance or you're advising people on something else you know running a cloud for them or something you know this is a great top up to add as you know a data science service along with what you're doing. Yeah, Bharat, you would you? Bharat, you want to add up something? Yeah, it depends on the the background, the use case, or or, or the idea they have. Right? So it's a very specific and tailored question. You're right. True that. Uh, let's take another question. This is from Satish. Uh, data scientist project is only development project, uh, or we can see support kind of project. If yes, what type of support jo jobs we would be able to see in the future? I would say 
there would be very less support. It's not like a maintenance team, right? So data science practitioners themselves support are involved in model updating, right? It's a continuous part. Model needs to learn, evolve continuous, right? So it is not like something. Um, it's not like a software. Once you deploy it, right? Uh, someone is giving some kind of support for any edge case, right? Someone is coming up with a unique edge case. The 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 software fails, and you you're not resolving that, right? It's not a software thing, right? It's a it's a data science is something where you deploy and you train your model, you get new data, you train your model, you update your model, you update your insights. So there is no that kind of support. It is a continuous learning and a redeployment process. So earlier people used to say data science model training is uh, tough. Now they are saying data science model first training is easy, second training is tough because you have yeah. to update. So now, <laughs> So now we are in a stage that okay, okay I'm deploying the model easy, it's becoming easy, but updating the model is getting uh, tougher and tougher. And tougher, tougher. Uh, I think there is there are support opportunities in the engineering side of data where you are maintaining pipelines and you know you're deploying models. So, yeah. It's, it's yeah, so which is again, you know, yeah, that there you have so we run a you know nine month online weekend for executives data engineering program as well. So you know, for that, this 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 becomes part of what 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 you may do. Yeah. Okay, so if, in the interest of time, uh, we would not be able to take more questions. But there are really, uh, I mean, a lot of people are asking, uh, you know, about their career specific career uh, transitions. So uh, I would suggest that please reach out to Professor and Bharat uh, personally. They were available on LinkedIn. Uh, professor's uh, email ID is also there on their website. So please reach out to them and uh, they'll be happy to take up the questions. Uh, before uh, I, I wrap up. A point. Yeah, I just have a point. Is Are these questions getting recorded? I mean, are, will we have? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if you can, if you can send the questions to us, you know, in a in a word 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 doc doc, then what we can do is we can actually answer those questions, and then you can share it across the entire list of people who registered for the program. Good. I Sounds think. good. Yeah. yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. No problem. Good. So. Uh... Yeah, before I wrap up the session, I would like to understand any last words of advice to the aspirants. We'll start with Professor and then we'll go to Bharat. I think you should start with Bharat in this first. Yeah. I, think, um, yeah. I would personally say it's a very exciting and demanding field. It demands your time and effort, but it's very exciting and your job satisfaction levels would be high. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to quote yeah. yeah, I'm going to quote Donald Bradman on, in this. Donald Bradman used to say that if you win the toss, uh, you should select, you should bat first. And if the pitch is bad and all of that, and you win the toss, you should think hard and still bat first. So <laughs> yeah, okay, so, yeah. So so I am saying that you know data science is demanding, and if you want, if if you are thinking about a career in data science, please jump in. And if you think if you have a lot of constraints and you're still not sure, still jump in. I mean, you know, because I think that uh, there, there, is, there is a lot of excitement, a lot of learning, and and the I, I can I have seen this over the last 11 years, the way this field has moved, it is just unbelievable. From where we started, where the students didn't know what we were trying to teach, and we had to, we had to literally you know psychologically bribe the students to join us to to a stage where we have you know wait lists and all of that and not just that the the way the recruiters have taken up the way the industry is adopting and the what is going to happen in future so i mean if you are in doubt you should go for it if you're not in doubt uh, anyway you should go I for want it. to yeah. say one thing the last the current uh n Srinivasan, the chairman of tata since he, he said that we are going to have cars that 70 percent of the expenditure will be on software so software is not just running the cars right so that software involves data and that data also involves uh, the applications and projects in data science so it is going to be ubiquitous it's going to be everywhere and all the time right correct and uh really good words of inspiration and uh, i completely agree that if 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 anybody is thinking even a 0.5 percent about data or about this industry this is the right time start 
just pick batting and just get into this uh, field. Uh, whatever happens next, it is all we can learn. We can learn on the field. There are courses. There are brilliant courses, and there are people to help. So on that note, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Bharat. Great discussion, and I hope it, it sort of helped our audience to understand and you know jumpstart their career in data science as we promised. So thank you, Professor. Thank you, Bharat.